Um, we have close to 1.3 billion population in the country. We have uh, about 10 big cities, which uh, host about 100 million people. And we have uh, 50 cities with at least 1 million population in them. And they cover about uh, 30, 30 to 35 percent of the population. And they cover a you know, land cover land area of less than 5 percent in the country. So you have less than 5 percent of the land cover hosting close to 35 to 40 percent of the population, what we call an urban extent, and the um, rest of it spread across the country, what we have the rural India. And we have a, one of the growing problems in the country is basically air pollution. And this problem is not um, restricted to only to the cities, but we have it across the country. So when, we come to, when it comes to air pollution, what are the different pollutants that we usually uh, have to worry about? There are many, many pollutants, many metals, minerals that we need to, we have uh, lots of notes on. And these are the six very critical pollutants that we need to worry about. The top two are particulate matter, PM, uh, commonly also known as aerosols, dust, soot, and we have many other names. And they have different sizes. And two size fractions that we really have to keep in mind is PM2.5 and PM10. PM2.5 is particulate matter with everything less than 2.5 uh, micrometer diameter, mm -hmm. and the other one is 10 micrometer diameter. And smaller the size, uh, higher the tendency, to, tendency to for it to go into your lungs or even get lodged in the bloodstream and, and leads to many other health impacts. And the other four you have on the list, these are gases. You have very commonly, uh, you have it in your notes as well, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, ozone, and carbon monoxide. And especially in the high schools, we are very easily, uh, when the first pollution that we are uh, enlightened to is carbon monoxide. It gets attached to hemoglobin and it leads to a lot of health impacts. And you have commonly seeing a lot more cases being registered on, on asthma, other respiratory related issues. We are also seeing a, a greater increase in heart related issues that can be linked to air pollution. And most of these cases, uh, they do end up in a, a fatal situation, but you don't see a death certificate which says that this person died of air pollution. Uh, because air pollution is only a trigger. If you're already vulnerable to any of these diseases, it basically accelerates your uh, body towards that fatal uh, situation. And that's why we refer to it as premature death, uh, what you see at the last, at the end. So what it means is your, uh, in, in medical terms, we call them as disability adjusted life years. When you are, because you're getting exposed to so much pollution, so much variety of pollutants, uh, you are losing certain number of uh, years uh, for living in a particular city. So in India, the kind of pollution that we are seeing on average estimate is that compared to 20 years ago, we are losing uh, 3.6 years, life years, uh, to the pollution that we are uh, exposed to. And there's a lot of medical research that's coming out and this is in 2009, the Central Pollution Control Board put together data from different hospitals looking at how many cases are we registering uh, that can be uh, related to asthma or other respiratory related issues. And Delhi, of course, came on top. And uh, the statistics continue. And uh, this is from 2015, study only from AIMS in Delhi, looking at what has been the trend in the number of cases registered or patients that came to AIMS and uh, particular chest institution uh, as well. So there was a th marked 300 percent increase in number of patients coming to the hospital. And a lot of other studies are also published, but more remarkably, there is now a tremendous interest from the public. Uh, there was a case filed on behalf of three toddlers by their parents in the Supreme Court asking for a ban on firecrackers. Again, this is a very uh, specific incident, very specific pollutant, uh, a polluting event that they want to um, uh, focus on, but it has a large implications. And just to put a few more things into perspective, so this is from 2016, 
for one week only. Uh, this is just following Diwali and there were also a lot of fires that happened in Punjab and Haryana and the data that we were logging at uh, different monitoring stations. Peaks were at 3500 micrograms per meter cube and a weekly average exposure rate was about 500 micrograms per meter cube and I want you to compare that to what we call as 24 hour standard, uh, health standard about 60 micrograms per meter cube, and if you go to WHO, World Health Organization guideline, that is 25. So I mean, you are exposed to, on average, in the peak period of October, November, December, 20 times more than what World Health Organization says is a health guideline for that particular pollutant. And I'm, I'm putting a, a little bit more emphasis on, the, on this pollutant, PM2.5, is because it's a, complex pollutant and it has contributions from a variety of sources and contributions from variety of chemicals as well. So we have other gaseous pollutants, SO2, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, ozone, CO, all of them actually contribute in some, some way or the other to the, the PM2.5 that we are breathing on a daily basis. Okay. So, so even though those specific examples for Delhi only, the problem is not restricted to only Delhi. It's a, it's a nationwide problem, it's a global problem, and we are seeing a, a significant rise in the pollution levels that we are seeing, not only in the cities, but also in the rural areas as well. So based on data coming from the satellites and, and combined with some of the data that's coming from the on-ground monitoring stations and what we see in terms of activities in different cities and rural areas, if you start looking at the pattern, what happened in 1998, what we have observed in 1998 versus 2014, there's a marked difference. So the number of districts of the 640 districts in India, number of districts that exceeded the national guideline in 1928 versus 2014 is 40% versus 60%. And this is, uh, it is only going to increase as more and more districts are going to be listed as urban centers and more and more um, activities will be contributing to this problem. Okay. And we see this marked difference also in the health impacts. Again, the global burden of disease estimates, these are done every year based on the statistics collected by the Minister of Health and uh, the Department of Housing. So they basically collect a lot of information on the patterns of patients that are going to the hospital, what kind of ailments are they registering, and the data is collected. And also looking at what is the pattern in the air pollution across these areas, they have a uh, way of putting it together, what we call as dose response function, and try to see the, the change in these patterns. Like how often do we see a certain disease increasing? and how that it can be correlated to the patterns uh, in, in air pollution, nutrition, behavioral patterns, injuries, accidents, traffic. They look at about 250 different endpoints and, and come up with this um, statistical estimate. There's a lot of hand waving and number crunching involved, but it tells us a good story on where we are and where is this going. Okay, so the blue items, these are non-communicable diseases. And these have a very marked linkage to air pollution that we, have, we are experiencing in the cities. And you will see on the top the ischemic heart disease. So basically it has direct linkage to how the blood is pumped to and from the heart. And uh, a lot of cardiovascular diseases, low respiratory infections, all of them have seen a marked increase in the last 15 years. Okay. Yeah. If we convert the same graph into risks. What is causing those diseases? And where, are, where is that uh, risk coming from? You have, you'll see that a marked increase is coming from, again, outdoor air pollution and indoor air pollution. Okay. So as I said, the problem is not restricted to cities only. Even in the rural areas, we have a, a lot of exposure issues to, especially indoor air pollution. A lot of households still, uh, use coal and biomass and cow dung and a few other unconventional fuels and they contribute significantly to uh, our uh, health um, our exposure rates. But a good thing is in 1990, household related health effects were number one, then they moved to number four in 2015. 
So this gives us direction where we have gone from 1990 to 2014. There has been a, a significant um, improvement in, in the expansion and dis distribution of LPG and also use of electricity for cooking and heating. That changed some of that when that actually is included in this pattern that we are seeing. But a change which is on the other side is in the outdoor air pollution. Okay. So more and more cities are joining what we call as urban areas and there we have very high increase in uh, basically traffic, lot of industries are coming up in those areas, lot of demand for construction that links to all the brick kilns. We have a lot of waste management issues. If waste doesn't pick, get picked up from the roads or from the bhattis, it gets burnt after a week. So you have a lot of pollution from that. So we are seeing a lot more urban signatures that are linked to air pollution uh, and health uh, than we have seen in the past. So number crunching on this side is a lot more easier. So things get a little bit more complicated and uh, difficult to ascertain where is this pollution coming from. Okay. So this is where I think health experts and uh, scientists, uh, environmental scientists have a little bit of a clash on how do you apportion how much pollution is one exposed to. So you have power plants running on coal, diesel and, uh, and natural gas. So natural gas is obviously better than coal but how do we um, and enforce changes into that. You have a lot of industries, I mean if you, you have industries ranging from brick kilns, for example, even within Pune, if you just go outside towards Pimpri Chinchwad, you have a lot of brick kilns. The demand for construction in the cities is so high, the, the, the supply is actually a lot more um, lagging than we actually think of. And you have a lot of industries kind of going from fertilizers, iron and steel, cement, a lot of mineral processing that happens uh, in, in states like Bihar, Rajasthan, West Bengal. So we have a, a lot of uh, uh, that. And then you have vehicles. I mean, we have a very high demand for freight that comes into the city. And we also have a very high demand for personal vehicles. And households, this is one sector which actually is seeing a lot more progress than uh, we are seeing in the other sectors. And we shouldn't be neglecting some of the natural sources of pollution uh, that we have in, uh, in, in, our, in our country, especially dust storms, lightning, a lot, lot of forest fires that happen over the season. So all these things also contribute. But the biggest challenge remains in how do we apportion this pollution to different sectors and what can be done in these sectors so that we have a cleaner environment and good health in cities and in rural areas. So there's a lot of innovation that's happening. Um, so. Uh, both in terms of technology, but also in terms of public awareness as well. So you, you really need to focus on, on both ends. You need to have technology that can help you reduce pollution at the sources and, and across the cities, but we also need to raise the awareness on air pollution to the public. There's also a lot of uh, innovations coming from the artists as well. They are raising some awareness on, on, um, on, on some of this. This is an installation by a, a Dutch artist uh, it's in, in, in Beijing and they're basically pulling dust into this uh, tower and compressing it and making dust rings. They're very popular in, 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 in Beijing and they make about 10 rings a day. So it actually gives you an idea of how much pollution is being sucked into that. But very important is we can't rely on vacuum cleaners. I mean, that's, that, that's a one way of raising awareness saying that we, are, that we are catching so much pollution because so much pollution is there outside. But if we want clean air, better health and a clean environment for everybody to grow, then we need to basically start looking at how do we cut down pollution at the sources. And, and it, sources range from your household, cooking and heating to waste to what's happening on the road and at the industries. I mean, the whole range has to be expressed and, and we shouldn't be relying on vacuum cleaners and uh, purifiers alone to do the job for us, okay? Thank you.